We're at an interesting time in this country with opiate prescribing. The rates of opiate prescriptions went up pretty consistently uh, through the, the early part of this century. It used to be that opiate use for chronic pain was pretty minimal, and then it became quite common. It's very clear that the reason that the United States has a much higher rate of opioid use than other countries um, is because of overmarketing of opioids by the pharmaceutical companies. A portion of it is cultural. We have a sense in our country that there is a pill injection or surgery that will fix everything. And I think it's important that as we start to understand pain better, that we understand that elimination of pain is not really a realistic goal any more than elimination of heart disease or elimination of diabetes. Dentists or surgeons, emergency room physicians who um, introduce opioids to the majority of Americans, we have to be very thoughtful about how we do that. We know from the data we collect in our clinic that almost 100% of the people coming in have tried opioids chronically for some period of time. And 50% of those patients still take opioids on a daily basis. And what's really alarming is that most of those patients don't actually ascribe benefit to the opioids, but still continue to take them on a daily basis. The truth is that there's very little evidence that actually chronic opioid therapy really helps people uh, much at all given the um, significant side effects which go beyond potential addiction and dependent. The best evidence for treating individuals with chronic pain um, is really for non-drug therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, exercise, acupuncture, yoga, tai chi. But most of our clinics don't in any way make those treatments available because they're not reimbursed and thus there aren't as many providers as there might otherwise be. I think what we have to do in the United States is really move our practice patterns more towards those that are used by other countries where the non-drug therapies are sort of the preferred early approach. Um, and then you really only use surgery or opioids or things like that after people really have failed to respond to those other therapies. I had the pleasure of being on the Health and Human Services Pain Management Task Force that I think will have sweeping implications for reimbursement because our hope is that as a result from that report that first Medicare and Medicaid will start reimbursing for some of these non-drug therapies and then other third-party payers will follow suit. A key component of the root cause of the opiate epidemic is to is to right-size prescribing. And that will eliminate excess pills that get into our communities and will prevent you know, opioid-naive patients, well patients, from becoming chronic opioid users. Many of them can move on to true substance use disorder. There does seem to be signs that the U.S. as a whole is trying to reduce opioid prescription towards preventing um, more exposure towards opiates and more problems down the road. In Michigan now, there's a specific recommendation for um, prescribing after the common surgical procedures. Now, those recommendations are not relevant to every patient. Some people need none, and some people need more. That's where the care happens. That's where nurses and doctors have to make decisions. Within our network of 70 hospitals, within the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative, we have data on how many pills surgeons give patients, how many pills they take, and then the patient's outcomes. As a result, we've had a lot of uh, success to reduce opioid prescribing and improve pain care. We are solving one problem, which is there's fewer acute short-term opioid prescriptions in the U.S. We actually have just as large of a population of people who have been on opioids for a very long time, and a lot of people are reliant on it because they, it actually is effective for their pain for one reason or another, or because actually tapering off the therapy is too difficult for them. I have some concern that a lot of the policies we're implementing to try and address and improve opiate prescribing are having an unintended effect of reducing access to opiates for people where it's appropriate. I really worry about the effects on mental health and the effects on potentially transitioning to heroin or other opiates that are not prescribed that are much riskier for people. People. So I think there really needs to be more of a health system approach to how to address opiate use disorders that comes along with this push to prescribe opiates. Perhaps we need some more nuance to make sure that we are not um, restricting use when it's appropriate. Pain care is complicated and every patient needs best care. We aren't trying to take opioids away from patients who benefit from them. But growing evidence shows that opioids do more harm than good for most patients. Opioids are not a good tool for chronic pain, and yet many people with chronic pain are taking them. Having that first conversation with the patient about coming off of opioids while still having pain is a challenging conversation. But 
When you take that time with patients and you do it in a slow, structured process, what you find is that you're actually helping patients re-engage in life. Even if the pain's no better, it's seldom worse. And what does change is the quality of life improves. It's helping give them a new chance at life and a better alternative for their long term.